ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम टेंथ कैंटो चैप्टर एट वर्सेस एट एंड नाइन कम सह पापमति सख्यम तव च आनकदुंदुबे देवक्या अष्टम गर्भ न स्त्री भविथी संचिन्त्यता संचित श्रुवा देवक्यावच अंतागत आशंक तत् नय भव कंस पापमति सख्यम तव चाणका दुंदुबे देवक्याष्टमो गर्भो न स्त्री भविहति संचित श्रुवा देवक्यादारिकावच अभी हंता गता शंक तो नयो भवे कंस पापमति सख्यम तव चाणका दुंदुबे देवक्याष्टमो गर्भो न स्त्री भविहति कंस पापम पापमति सख्यम तव चाणका दुंदुबे देवक्याष्टमो गर्भो न स्त्री भविहति देवक्याष्टमो गर्भो न स्त्री भविहति माताजी कंस पापमति सख्यम तब चाणका दुंदुबे देवक्याष्टमो गर्भो न स्त्री भविहति कंस किंग कंस पापमति वेरी वेरी सिंफुल 
having a polluted mind sakhyam friendship tava your cha also anaka dundubehe of vasudev devakya of devaki ashtamah garbah the eight pregnancy na not stri a woman bhavitum arhati is possible to be translation kamsa is both a great diplomat and a very sinful man therefore having heard from yogamaya the daughter of devaki that the child who will kill him has already been born somewhere else having heard that the eighth pregnancy of devaki could not bring forth a female child and having understood your friendship with vasudev kamsa upon hearing that the purificatory process has been performed by me the priest of the yadu dynasty may certainly consider all these points and suspect that krishna is a son of devaki and vasudev then he might take steps to kill krishna that would be a catastrophe purport kamsa knew very well that yogamaya was after all the maid servant of krishna and vishnu and that although yogamaya had appeared as the daughter of devaki she might have forbidden to disclose this fact actually this was what had happened garga muni argued very soberly that his taking part in performing the reformatory process for krishna would give rise to many doubts so that kamsa may take very severe steps to kill the child kamsa had already sent many demons to attempt to kill this child but none of them had survived if garga muni were to perform the purificatory process kamsa's suspicions would be fully confirmed and he would take very severe steps garga muni gave this warning to nanda maharaj om ajnati mirandhasya ज्ञानाजन शलाखया चक्षुरुम मिलित ये नस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमा ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातरिणे वाछाकूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैता गदाधार श्रीवासादिगौर्भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा सुंदर वर्ष we understand the anxiety of gargamuni the anxiety is that kamsa should not get a reconfirmation that krishna is actually vasudev nandan that krishna actually is devaki nandan <clears throat> propat says that devotees they take great pleasure in knowing that krishna is vasudev nandan in calling krishna as devaki nandan The Radha Madhav prayers are so beautiful. Yeah. Radha Madhav, Kunja Bihari, Gopi Jana Vallabha, Giri Varadhari, Yashoda Nandan. Hmm? I mean, every every name of Krishna is related to some devotee in this beautiful prayer. So devotees become very happy when they hear about Krishna's relationships. But here, Krishna's same relationships are a cause of fear hmm? because of Kamsa. <coughs> I sometimes used to wonder, what will we do in the spiritual world? Eternal time, no time clock, nothing. Our students get so bored in a semester. 
uh, after mid semester they are waiting for the se end semester to get over they are waiting for uh, one pehlu to pehlu to get over and the next pehlu to start what do you do in the spiritual world <clears throat> but then actually this verse is also sets me thinking that actually the spiritual world is characterized by eternal attempts unceasing attempts to intensify relationships to keep thinking about relationships intensify relationships intensify one's own relationship with krishna and intensify others relationship with krishna actually there is no limit to intensifying relationships all of us have relation uh, nice relationships with some devotee or the other and every time we meet there's so much to discuss especially if we can relate to someone and especially uh, with parents a child can easily relate every time the child goes home mother has some special uh, items cooked some special delicacies cooked so there's so much to do to intensify a relationship and therefore uh, that's the only activity in the spiritual world intensify relationship with krishna in the form of his holy name uh, intensifying relationship with devotees by serving together this is the pa eternal past time of the spiritual world and the same past time is completely to the dislike of kamsa so this is the material world material consciousness i was just trying to study this point of relationship <clears throat> a vaishnava is paradukha dukhi and he is a parasukha sukhi he feels extremely distressed by seeing others distressed hmm. there is this uh, nice word samvedana samvedana means samyak vedana hmm. sam means equal and vedana means pain so a devotee when he sees someone suffering a gentleman when he sees someone suffering he feels the same pain because he relates to that person that's quite difficult actually because very often we uh, judge others by their action and ourselves by our intentions it becomes very difficult to be actually uh, feeling pain to see someone else's pain hmm. very easy to justify that that person is suffering his own reactions we apply philosophy on others and apply compassion on ourselves so it's very difficult <clears throat> Uh, forget about feeling about others relationships going sour we butcher our own relationships with others in this material world <clears throat> at least i'm talking about myself there's no limit to the butchering we have done to our relationships since the time we came to this material world krishna is eternally present as paramatma in the heart but still we are ignoring ignoring him completely or radhika vallabh prabhu i heard one of his classes at sayan uh, uh, and a very nice very nice point he makes he says that para dukha dukhi is difficult but to be para sukha sukhi is even more difficult to become happy by seeing someone else happy to become happy by seeing some other relations flourish that's what spiritual world is about spiritual world is not only to become happy by seeing others relation other relationships flourish but to intensify those relationships in the most inconceivable ways krishna is running and the cowherd boys are running behind krishna and each of them is trying to over overtake the others aham purvam aham purvam i will be first why so as to motivate the others to run faster to krishna to intensify their relationship with krishna inconceivable uh, this is inconceivable for me we can't even honor the sanctity of other relationships others relationships forget about fostering them and going out of our way to foster that and that too in such inconceivable ways this is a characteristic of the spiritual world and this is what we want to meditate on fill our heart fill our hearts with positive vibes <coughs> based on krishna's past times <coughs> i was just trying to make some uh, i was trying to list down all the instances from the scriptures where one's relationship with krishna or one's uh, devotee's relationship with another devotee are fostered or very often a devotee fosters another devotee's relationship with a third devotee and also instances where a very very uh, <coughs> conscious attempt is made to sabotage sabotage someone else's relationship <coughs> so we will meditate on few of the past times uh, where relationships are fostered one of the classic examples is from the chaitanya charitamrita the past name of maharaj pratap rudra 
Balaj Pratap Rutra is on a treasure hunt. <laughs> so we have many campuses, the, the students, they play this game called treasure hunt. There's some treasure lying somewhere in the campus. And then uh, somewhere in the, uh, <coughs> the area. And then there are clues given so as to be able to find that treasure hunt and that treasure, the treasure hunt. So clues lead to the treasure. So Maharaj Pratap Rudra is seeking Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's association. <clears throat> and actually he is hoping against hope. Because after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returns to Jagannath Puri, uh, Maharaj Pratap Rudra asks Sarva Matacharya, where is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Why has he gone to South India? Jagannath Puri is so nice. Sometimes Brajwasis, they say, why you want to go to Bombay? Vrindavan is so nice. So he was asking, why did Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu go to South India? And Sarva Bhattacharya explains, wherever the Lord goes is a holy place. So he has gone to create holy places in South India. So at that time, Maharaj Bhattabhadra expresses desire, when the Lord comes back, can I meet him please? Sarva Bhattacharya says, I will try. The Lord may not agree, but I will try. <clears throat> and Sarva Bhattacharya, in fact, made some advanced preparations to <clears throat> create more favorable environment for Maharaj Pratap Rudra to meet Lord Chaitanya. He said, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu needs some place to stay. Can you arrange? Maharaj, Maharaj Pratap Rudra said, no problem. Kashi Mishra is my guru. His, he has a house. And in that house, there is a chamber called Gambhira. Gambhira is like a small room in o Odia. So that room Gambhira is completely for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So after taking permission from Kashi Mishra, that room was allotted. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came back. Sarvabhattacharya introduced so many devotees to Lord Chaitanya. <clears throat> Even Kav Das got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Completely hopeless case, but by the mercy of the devotees, Kav Das got to render service to Lord Chaitanya's mother, Sachi Mata, and all the devotees in Navdweep. All the devotees from Navdweep, they took their yatra to Jagannath Puri after hearing the message of Lord Chaitanya's return, Sarva Bhattacharya asked Lord Chaitanya, can Maharaj Pratap Rudra meet you? Absolutely no. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, wasn't happy with this proposal. In fact, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was introduced to so many devotees, so many wonderful new devotees, Bhavanand Rai and his sons. Lord Chaitanya said that you he gave special mercy to Bhavanand Rai and he said, you and your sons are my eternal servants. Actually, Bhavanand Rai, Prabhupada says, was from the fourth class, but still he accepted him. And Maharaj Pratap Rudra was a king. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu set the standards of a sannyasi. No, I will not, I won't want to meet him. Of course, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did, did not belittle Maharaj Pratap Rudra. He just expressed his own standards. <clears throat> Sarva Bhattacharya, he really wanted. This is an example of a devotee who is working against all odds to facilitate the union of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Maharaj Pratap Rudra. Sarvabhattacharya understands Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire and therefore he doesn't want to force the Lord, otherwise the Lord in, in fact threatened to move out of Jagannath Puri. At the same time Sarvabhattacharya feels for the desire of Maharaj Pratap Rudra. And then there are so many beautiful pastimes that take place. <coughs> Uh, Maharaj Pratap Rudra, he becomes party to the team of devotees who receive different devotees from Navdweep. He is asking who is this devotee, who is this, this personality, he is Advaita Acharya. So he, all these devotees are being introduced by Sarup Damodar Goswami. So Maharaj Pratap Rudra is getting to know more and more devotees of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his thirst for meeting Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is increasing. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's resolution to not meet Maharaj Pratap Rudra is also firm as ever. In fact, <clears throat> it's a very beautiful description where Ramanand Rai, one of the sons of Bhavanand Rai, he is serving under Maharaj Pratap Rudra in South India. And by the arrangement of Maharaj Pratap Rudra, Ramanand Rai is relieved from his duties. It's a beautiful verse. In the Chaitanya Chaitamrita Madhya Lila, Chapter 11. <clears throat> so Ramanand Rai, he says, Raya kahe tomar agya raja ke kohila, tomar icha raja mora vishaya chadaila. 
oh lord i express to maharaj pratap rudra your desire that i should be with you i duly inform king Pra pratap rudra of your order for me to retire from service by your grace the king was pleased to relieve me of those material activities ami kahi ama hoyte nahaya vishaya chaitanya charane rahon yadi agya hoya i said your majesty i am now willing i am not not willing to engage in political activities i desire only to stay at the lotus feet of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu kindly give me permission what happened to king when he submitted this proposal tomar naam shuni raja anandita hoila asana hoyte uthi mora alinga gana koila when i submitted this proposal the king immediately became very pleased upon hearing your name indeed he instantly rose from his throne and embraced me so happy so maharaj pratap rudra is so happy to facilitate the union between ramanand rai and lord chaitanya and sarva bhattacharya is trying to facilitate the union between maharaj pratap rudra and lord chaitanya this is the past time of the spiritual world and what did huh, the king do he became so happy he immediately granted me a pension without any reduction not 50% of salary full pension without reduction thus the king granted me a full salary as a pension and requested me to engage without anxiety in the service of your lotus feet no anxiety i want your relationship with lord chaitanya mahaprabhu to be the only focus of your life no other anxiety <clears throat> and maharaj pratap rudra what did he say i am most fallen and abominable i am unfit to receive an interview with the lord one's life is successful if one engages in his service so what did ramanand rai say he says maharaj pratap rudra has so much love for you my love for you o lord is not even a fraction of his love and what did lord chaitanya mahaprabhu say he says prabhu kohe tumi krishna bhakata pradhana tomake ye priti kare sei bhagyavana shri chaitanya mahaprabhu then said my dear ramanand rai you are the foremost of all the devotees of krishna therefore whoever loves you is certainly a very fortunate person <laughs> So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is considering the meeting of Ramanand, the service of Maharaj Pratap Rudra to Ramanand Rai, as the greatest fortune of Maharaj Pratap Rudra. And in some sense, the question is averted. The request is averted. But then again, we find Sarva Bharta Charya making another attempt to facilitate this union. It's a beautiful pastime in the Madhya Lila of Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita. so sarvotacharya is thinking is thinking vichar kari what to do what to do what to do and then he says when the rath yatra is going on that's the best time for you to meet lord chaitanya mahaprabhu because he will be in ecstasy and then we know the past time of how maharaj pratap rudra he rendered some menial service to lord chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, protected the lord as he was dancing and then uh, when the lord was taking rest in the afternoon gently massaged the lord's lotus feet so by the mercy of uh, one devotee Maharaj Pratap Rudra and Lord Ramanand Rai, uh, sorry, Maharaj Pratap Rudra and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had their wonderful union. So, like this, there are so many beautiful pastimes in the Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Another beautiful pastime from the Sri Chaitanya Bhagwat, heart churning. <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu once in Navdeep he started contemplating on a great devotee. named pundrik vidyanidhi he told the devotees there's a great devotee of the lord pundrik vidyanidhi who's who was born in chatagram and very soon he is going to come here so you can imagine the lord's desire had to be manifested so pundrik vidyanidhi had to come and lord chaitanya mahaprabhu was glorifying pundrik vidyanidhi that he doesn't perform his ablutions in mother ganga for fear of contaminating he didn't want to put his feet in mother ganga on the other hand he very carefully respects mother ganga by drinking ganga jal every day he is an abode of love for krishna so eventually pundrik vidyanidhi comes to navdeep the only devotee who could understand lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's narration of pundrik vidyanidhi was mukunda because mukunda was from the same place chatagram and mukunda he was very close friend with gadadhar pandit and gadadhar pandit was such a renowned devotee mukunda wanted gadadhar pandit to get the beautiful association of pundrik vidyanidhi um, under his tutelage as his 
as a spiritual master so mukunda he told gadadhar pandit that there is a very nice devotee in nadweep he has come to nadweep uh, he is he is the kind of devotee whom you are looking for in your life he is the kind of devotee who can inspire krishna bhakti in you gadadhar pandit was so happy and mukunda said the only thing i want in return from you is that please accept me as your servant wow what an exchange offer i will facilitate this union and only thing i want is you accept me as your servant they went to pundri vidyanidhi's place of residence and what did they find now gadar pandit he had developed very great expectations about pundri vidyanidhi as like kurma prabhu explains in his transcendental adventure that Prabhupada had never visited Australia, but the devotees would glorify Prabhupada with such enthusiasm that newcomers who had never seen Prabhupada would get an image of Prabhupada as a very big person, a big person, very ma- magnanimous but gloriously big also. So sometimes when we hear, we develop our own conceptions. But Gadar Pandit, his only conception was that Pundrik Vinayadi is a pure devotee of the Lord. But what did they find? what did gadadhar pandit see pudrik vidyanadi was very comfortably seated on a bed made of silk foam beautiful cushions pillows pudrik vidyanadi requested mukunda to introduce gadadhar pandit who is this nice devotee i can see just by seeing him i understand that he is a very great devotee of the lord gadadhar pandit was introduced by mukunda da mukunda prabhu to pudrik vidyanadi and then gadadhar pandit noticed such royal opulence there are two mirrors on both sides of where pundrik vidyanadi is seated and he is constantly looking into the two mirrors his lips are reddened uh, reddened because he is chewing betel leaves and there are two personalities doing chamar on both sides <clears throat> there is fragrance and there are some sandalwood dots uh, on the face of pundrik vidyanadi very beautifully decorated uh, very expensive garments so gadar pandit developed some doubt after hearing from mukunda i thought pundrik vidyanadi must be a great devotee but now i having second thoughts mukunda he could sense he could sense this doubt in the heart of pundrik vidyanadi uh, in the heart of gadadhar pandit because he had an intense desire that gadadhar pandit gets the association of pundrik vidyanadi if one has an intense desire krishna will reveal in the heart whatever knowledge is required to facilitate this intense union so what did he do he started singing a beautiful prayer from the shrimad bhagavatam because he wanted to act in such a way that brings out the best from pudrik vidyanadi very often a materially contaminated consciousness acts in the following way you want to introduce person a to person b but obviously you want to either keep control over the relationship or you don't want to get the best of impression in fact one is very threatened what if i introduce a to b and then i am out of the picture so very often we might a materially contaminated mind might try to facilitate a relationship or an introduction to bring out the worst from both of them mm-hmm. we'll introduce you to each other during the shrimad bhagavatam class when both of you are asleep <laughs> but here is the beautiful consciousness of mukunda he wants to bring out the best from putrik vidyanadi which he is the best putrik vidyanadi is the best he is prashbanu maharaj so what did he sing he, he sang aho bakiyam stana kala kutam i mean how can one fa- take shelter of some someone who merciful than lord krishna who gave the divine position of a mother to a demon who was interested in the blood of young children who was interested in killing young children she smeared her breast with poison in order to kill krishna but krishna only extracted the motherly love from her and seeing hearing this pundrik vidyanadi what did he do all those opulences that were a cause of bewilderment for gadadhar pandit all those opulences were either broken to pieces or shred or or uh, thrown away helter skelter the pundrik vidyanadi started scratching his own clothes he started he fell down in ecstasy he was weeping tears and he was crying out how unfortunate i am that i have given up 
the shelter. I didn't take the shelter of this most merciful personality, Lord Krishna. How unfortunate I am. He was, he was crying. <clears throat> the chamaras went hither, hither. The mirrors got broken. The beetle leaves, which were nicely arranged on a tray, fell down. And Gadara Pandit, he realized, what a mistake. What a mistake I committed. He became extremely apologetic. And he submitted to Mukunda that I performed a great offense. I want to take initiation from Sri Bhuntri Vidyanadi. Of course, Kada, uh, Mukunda later on facilitated their, uh, this beautiful pastime of Kadara Pandit becoming a disciple of Puntrik Vidyanadi. So again, a beautiful, a beautiful pastime of uniting two great devotees of the Lord. Just recently we had Ram Nomi, and there are so many beautiful pastimes of Lord Ram. In fact, to actually respect a person, what does it mean? Very often, we want to respect someone, but what does it mean to respect a person? <clears throat> To respect a person means to respect that person's background, that person's relationships, that person's preferences. So ref pre respecting someone is a very holistic concept. So Lord Ram, in his great respect for Shatrugna, hmm? Shatrugna and Lakshman were both Shesha, Shesha like uh, parts, uh, they, because they got the, Mother Sumitra got remnants of the Payasa that Mother Kaikeyi and uh, Kaushalya had taken. So she had two sons, Shatrugna and Lakshman. And Shatrugna was dedicated to the service of Bharat and Lakshman was dedicated to the service of Lord Ram. Lord Ram he had so much appreciation for the service of Shatrugna to Bharat. Hmm. The Supreme Personality of God had right in his presence, two devotees are having such intimate relationship that Shatrugna is not even, a, not even Accompanying the Lord to the forest. He just wants to assist Bharat. And not only that, when Lord Ram comes back as a king, and then there is this news of the demon Lavanasur, the question is put who will go and attack and fight against Lavanasur? Bharat Maharaj volunteers. I will go and fight. But Shatrugna, he respected the relationship between Bharat Maharaj and, and Lord Ram, that Bharat Maharaj has already separate, uh, endured so much separation from Lord Ram. Let him not endure more separation. I will go. Lord Ram, as we understand from Valmiki Rama, and he immediately arranged for the coronation of Shatrugna. Just like he arranged for the coronation of Vibhishan, even before Lanka was conquered. He arranged for the coronation of Shatrugna as the king of <coughs> Madurapuri, the place where uh, Lamanasur was ruling. So, another beautiful exchange of uh, relationships and another uh, beautiful, ex beautiful demonstration of what is the mood in the spiritual world. Mother Sumitra, it so happened that when Hanumanji was taking Sanjeevani to uh, relieve, uh, to revive, Lakshmanji, on the way, Bharat Maharaj, it, is, it appears that he attacked uh, Hanumanji and Hanumanji got a bit delayed. So at that point, Mother Sumitra, she offered that Lakshman may not be able to serve Lord Ram anymore. So Shatrugna could go and serve. So she had, one son had already gone. She is already enduring separation. In fact, when Lakshman and Lord Ram were leaving for the forest, uh, Mother Sumitra was crying out of separation from Lakshman, the impending separation. But then she said, the only purpose Lakshman is born is to serve you, so please take him. And now she wanted to offer Shatrugna as well. Again, a beautiful illustration of uh, the transcendental abode of the Lord. When Shugriva established friendship with, friendship with Lord Ram with the desire of uh, punishing Wali and getting back his wife, Lord Ram said, please explain to me the offenses that Wali has committed against you. And Wali Raman says that Lord Ram suggested that if the offense he has committed is not too severe, then I will try my best to facilitate your reunion with Wali. So Lord Ram uh, didn't jump upon the opportunity to just go and kill Wali. He was considerate. 
If there is, if the offense is not too severe, I will try my best to facilitate your reunion. But if the offense is severe, then I will punish him. <clears throat> we also find some very beautiful pastimes of Srila Prabhupada. Hmm. Prabhupada was once in Mayapur and two of his servants were having some argument, some quarrel. And Prabhupada told the two devotees that you should have very loving relationship with each other. In fact, Prabhupada said that pilgrims who come to Mayapur, uh, they are often, always offered obeisances by the local residents. Why? Because the local residents or sometimes other pilgrims who offer obeisances, they think without offering my obeisances to this Vaishnava, my spiritual life will be ruined. My, I cannot make advancement in spiritual life. But the devotee who would be offered the obeisance would think, I am not even a devotee, I am a pretender. I am just trying to be a devotee. In fact, Jayadat Maharaj says that uh, to think that I am a Vaishnava is one of the biggest form of Sahajiaism. So Prabhupada said, this would be the loving relationship between the, the residents. So he was telling these two devotees that it doesn't mean that the relationship should be only with spiritual master. The disciples should have very good relationship with each other. Prabhupada was encouraging. And devotee came and told Prabhupada that, Prabhupada, I don't offer, feel like offering obeisances to this particular devotee. Prabhupada said, when you don't feel like offering obeisances, that's the real obeisance. You don't feel like offering, but you offer obeisance. So in material world, it's a struggle to... Uh, deepen our relationship with others. Forget about deepening our relationships. In our relationships, we often land up denying others' feelings. In fact, uh, become very hard-hearted at times. So obviously, the first and foremost principle is that we need to develop a deep desire to appreciate the importance of deepening our relationships and also uh, feeling very happy to see others relating very beautifully. We have the left wing and right wing gopi in the gopis in the spiritual world. And the only goal for Chandravali and the, and the group of gopis is to intensify the relationship between Lord Krishna and Radharani. That's the eternal pastime. Once Dr. Patil, who used to go with Srila Prabhupada on several morning walks, he saw that the devotees did not have very good shawls, were not covering themselves very nicely uh, while sleeping in the night. This was when the land at Juhu was newly acquired. So, Dr. Patel, he bought new clothes for all the devotees. And sorry, new blankets for all the devotees. But in a matter of few days, it came to his knowledge that the devotees, most of the devotees had either misplaced or torn or abused those uh, gifts the form of blankets that Dr. Patel gave. And Dr. Patel came complaining to Srila Prabhupada, look at what your disciples have done. They actually torn everything. And Prabhupada says, no, my disciples, they are beyond the bodily conception of life. They, they do not associate so much with the body. And for them, all these uh, blankets and all are a covering on the body. So therefore, you know, you should excuse them. How, pro how protective a devotee is about relationships, about protecting those who relate to him. We see a sharp contrast, contrast that Ravana, he put so many lives at stake. He put the life of Maricha at stake. Someone had to go and wake up Kumbhakarna. The person who would wake up Kumbhakarna had to die. <laughs> but he put someone's life at stake just for his own self-interest. And Lord Ram, the same Shugriva, <clears throat> who initially had doubts about Lord Ram's capability to fight against Vali. <clears throat> the same Shugriva, who in the explanation of some of the Ramanujaria sannyasis, was not very respectful to Lakshman in the beginning. That same Shugriva, in Lanka, he jumped at the sight of Ravan. In fact, he jumped and fought against Ravan, just when he saw him. And when Shugriva came back, Lord Ram said, why did you put your life at risk? What would have happened to me if you would have, if something would have happened to you? Everything would have been lost. So that one devotee, one monkey, in fact, every monkey soldier that, who fought for Lord Ram, Lord Ram valued their contribution so much, so much so that when Goindpur explains in his 
mind boggling narrations on ramayana he explains that when the vanar sena uh, had their first darshan of mother sita coming in a palanquin they were all very curious who is that person for whom we have been fighting so much kon hai wo so the vanar sena was like jumping up and down everyone acts according to his nature so vibhishan was trying to beat them in fact to shoo them away lord ram said no they are my 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 soldiers they are my friends please do not do any harm to them please let them continue having darshan of mother sita so uh, this book tra book transcendental personalism sutra swami writes that in this material world i comes before mine aham mamedi i i am important therefore mine is important but in the spiritual world mine comes before i the relationship is what defines me my my existence is because of relationships recently we had a uh, uh, professor anil gupta he is a padma shri award winner professor at iim ahmedabad very wonderful person so he was he came to iit bombay and we had some two three days of very nice talks and discussions in fact there was one discussion with uh, the students where he told all the students to recall all their granny stories he said i want to create a website called grannies on the net which is all the grandmothers the traditional knowledge the traditional culture that the grannies had uh, you should record all that and share because that's so important because traditional knowledge which is about a local ecosystem which is so important so he was saying that during one of his treks to some remote part <coughs> uh, there was one student with a group of students who were trekking this was to some rural place and one of the students he went really far ahead of the others and three of them really re lagged behind including this professor and two other girls so when professor gupta uh, finally met the boy who had who was first he asked him so how do you feel so this boy he said if you reach the top and you have no one to share you are not there so i reached the top i had no one to share so i was not there there was no point there's no one to share with <clears throat> so this relationship is what the spiritual the beauty of the spiritual world is and in this material world this relationship is very deep <clears throat> in fact what is varnashram about it's about relating properly to our own propensities and relating properly to the nature the lord's divine nature mm. that's that's what varnashram is about one of our phd students he was showing me that the food uh, the, the the vegetables and fruits the, from the source which is in the farmers fields to the destination which is our plates there are at least six uh six stoppages or six uh, points of transfer <clears throat> so we are so distant from the source and each one of those points itself can consist of hundreds of nodes of transfer so far away from nature we are from nature in vedic system was free food and free education so the culture itself was the very nature of transactions people get come closer to each other it was free food and free education you come close to each other you are constantly building on something which many of our professionals refer to as the emotional bank account emotional or the bank account of relationship the vedic culture was so that simply by your lifestyle you would be constantly investing in your relationship with others that's what ha would happen free food means constant relationship now all the relationship bank accounts are converted into uh, you know standard chartered bank accounts everything is through money and therefore we have so many relationship problems so the very concept is so holistic the lifestyle varnashram staying close to nature and beautiful relationship with devotees all of them facilitate each other and therefore propad he said uh, my fourth unfulfilled desire is to establish varnashram so just want to recap some of the points we discussed um, we are running out of time so we are we were contemplating on <clears throat> kamsas became becoming completely annoyed by seeing uh, by hearing about krishna's relationship with vasudev and devaki <clears throat> actually there were few more past times uh, related to how devotees have felt uh, sorry, how personalities have tried to sabotage relationships we see kai kai is past time 
um, she her when she, she knew that if the son is away from the kingdom for more than 12 years the kingdom is no longer the son's it will actually be transferred to someone else and the people the residents of the kingdom will also forget the king so therefore she chose the period of exile for lord ram as 14 which is more than 12 just to distance lord ram from his devotees brahma ji in the bharat bhagavat amrita he curses himself he narad muni comes to brahma ji you are the greatest devotee brahma ji is the greatest devotee the greatest devotee i i work so hard to separate lord krishna from the cowherd boys for one complete year i separated krishna from the cowherd boys and cows for a for an entire year and lord krishna was so unhappy with me for that and i blessed hiranyakashipu to such an extent that he created so much trouble for prahlad maharaj and therefore when i when i went in front of lord narsimha dev he did not even look at me he was so angry with me and actually to substantiate this point better he compares himself with lord shiva he says go to lord shiva there might have been instances where lord shiva as one of the demigods also felt obliged to bless demons but he never created separation between the lord and his devotees in fact lord shiva blessed rakasur and rakasur what did he do he wanted the benediction that anyone's head i touch turn to ashes so he approached lord shiva lord shiva started running away and lord krishna came to to save lord shiva and lord krishna spoke so beautifully when the lord speaks it's the most mesmerizing and rakasur was so mesmerized that he fell into the trap of the lord's advice why don't you test it out on yourself he tested it out on himself and that was the end of rakasur and then lord krishna tells lord shiva actually lord shiva uh vrikasur died because of offending you mm. and brahma ji says see um, lord krishna is telling lord shiva that vrikasur died because of offending you but lord krishna was so angry when i caused a separation between him and the cowherd boys mm. so he's cursing himself for um, being an instrument in separating the lord from his devotees so this is uh, the position of kamsa mm. on the other hand <coughs> devotees are always endeavoring to bring about transcendental reunion between the lord and his devotees prabhupad uh, and some disciples were at indore in madhya pradesh they were at the ho- house of a life member this life member was had prepared such opulent prasadam was like constantly feeding the devotees and giriraj maharaj very beautifully recounts that this life member wa- had fed giriraj maharaj to the rim and he was still offering one more sweet and giriraj maharaj didn't know he was saying no no i don't want to accept and then finally prabhupad he told giriraj maharaj you can take a sweet to make an old man happy and prabhupad accepted that sweet and then one uh, god brother of giriraj maharaj he remarked that actually you please two old men that life member and shila prabhupad as well <laughs> so devotees are always trying to exercise themselves so that beautiful relationships develop and this is what lord chaitanya mahaprabhu advented for to capture the hearts of all devotees by beautiful transcendental relationships so we need to de- i need to develop this mood so that we become part of the solution and not part of the problem and also as devotees it, i personally found it very helpful to learn certain tools and methods by which these relationships can be deepened because unconsciously there are four stages of you know existence you can be unconsciously incompetent you can be consciously incompetent you can be consciously competent but what the spiritual world is about is unconscious incompetence it's not that devotees are thinking hard scratching their hair before you know uh, interacting with others oh this relationship should grow or oh, these two devotees should come closer unconsciously this is the mood in the spiritual world because that's the nature of the spirit soul but in our conditioned state because of our unconscious incompetence to foster relationships it can be useful to not only understand the imp- the importance of uh, deepening relationships the importance of relationships as such because that's what spiritual life is all about 
But also we could learn there are certain tools and mechanisms. Our Anand Gopal Prabhu, he does some very nice uh, uh, parenting seminars, relationship seminars. I find it very helpful. So we could endeavor uh, to become part of the solution in this way. So that the Kamsa, like demon sitting in our heart, <clears throat> is not given the fuel. On the other hand, the, the real, realization and knowledge of the spiritual world dawns in our heart. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. If there are any questions or comments. Hare Krishna. Any corrections, Prabhu? Hare Krishna. Well, you transported us to the spiritual world by your mesmerizing talk. Uh, you said that Prabhupada's fourth plan was Varnashram. I want to know what his first three were. Um. I'm not able to recall exactly, Prabhu, but uh, the plans, the other three plans, I thought Prabhupada said they're already implemented. <laughs> so I'm not able to recall them, but I think one of them was book distribution, publishing books, um, facilitating Harinam Sankirtan, chanting of the holy names, and uh, establishing temples as places of worship. Is that correct, Prabhu? <laughs> Hare Krishna. Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Actually my question is not from today's this uh, Bhagavatam text, but from Bhagavad Gita only. Can I ask? Okay. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, there is a shloka called Karmane Vadika Raste Mafaleshu Kadachana Ma Karmapal Heturbar Mate Sangusta Karmani. Now, we know that uh, nothing happens without the wish and will of the Lord. There is a saying, no, the leaf cannot tremble without the wish and will of the Lord. So, where does the point of karma come? How, how, how are we making karma? So, when there is no independence, when everything happens according to the wish and the will of the Lord. So, how, how, how are we doing karma? That's what I want to ask. Hmm. Hare Krishna. I'll make an attempt and then maybe um, senior devotees can add more. So, both the independence of the living entity and the Lord's uh, freedom, His Swarat, both of them are eternal, eternally manifest beauties in the spiritual world. The living entity is free, He has a free will, that's beauty. And the Lord is also free, He is also Swarat. That's also, Bhakti is also free. The relationship between the two. And therefore, it's a manifestation of love. Now, just like if, if, if one jumps from the top of a building, then by the laws of nature, he'll break his heads, hands, etc. in the best case, and the worst case, he may die. That's by laws of nature. So that is what the Lord ordains. The law, law has, the Lord has fixed principles by which this material nature runs. But how those principles are executed depending on, depend on how we execute our free will. So whether to jump from a building or not is something I can exercise. But the Lord is not so cruel that He just designs laws of nature and gives us free will. He also comes and uh, gives us instructions filled with love, <clears throat> loaded with love. Instructions loaded with compassion on how we might want to make the best use of our free will. The, the Jains, etc., their focus is completely on karma. Everything happens by karma. Whereas the Christians, for them, everything is <coughs> Lord's mercy. But for Vaishnavas, it's a com combination of the two. The Lord is extremely merciful and kind. He is giving us intelligence in the, in the heart as Paramatma. And we often get these signals from the Lord. Don't do this certain thing. Don't do these certain things. So there are the Lord is eternally wanting to give us guidance, as explained in the Mundaka Upanishad. Also, that there are two birds sitting on the same tree. 
One is eating good fruits, bad fruits, sometimes bitter, sometimes nice and suffering. The other bird is there waiting to offer any help if sought for. So the Lord gives instructions on how we can use a free will. But if we misuse the free will, then there are certain laws of nature uh, and the, an appropriate course of action is taken according to those laws. Does that answer your question? Yes, Mataji. Prabhuji, you spoke very nicely about relationships and uh, respect. Uh, I have a question that sometimes devotees have a nice relationship and respect even. But later we found that uh, one devotee abusing other. And in beginning they said, I have uh, so much respect. But later we found so how that devotee should deal with that person. So, Mataji, your question is that you're talking about a, a case where two devotees have developed very good relationship, but then the later, later that relationship is abused. Uh, first of all, what does good relationship mean? <clears throat> there are certain questions we can ask ourselves. Good relationship will, should mean that there is, there is understanding of each other's natures, each other's likes, dislikes each other's priorities and preferences in life. One may not accept them as correct. <clears throat> but at the same time, one can, uh, there's genuine acknowledgement. So, respect also means respecting the other relations. I mean, the typical case is, <clears throat> now, husband, does he have, to, what does it mean to respect wife? To respect wife will also mean to respect the wife's uh, love for her parents. Oh, my parents are your all in all. That, that's not respect. <laughs> respect also means to acknowledge. Now, whether one can act on it or not is a different thing. So, in my understanding, to have good relationship, it's a very, uh, it's a deep subject. There can be some semblance of a relationship. <clears throat> Just because one talks, uh, we talk to each other, but is there a real samvedana? Is there a real feeling for the other person's uh, sufferings? So, it's very simple. If, if you do not have enough deposit in your account, <coughs> withdrawals are going to lead to closing of the bank account. That's, it. That's exactly what you're saying. So, if a relationship doesn't entail sufficient deposit in the relationship in terms of acknowledgement and understanding and respecting, each other's natures. Uh, <clears throat> what you are mentioning is just an exposure of a very uh, superficial relationship. That could be the case. Anyone wants to add to that? Hare Krishna. Krithra Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Srila Prabhupada ki.